Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it if you've you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Ian Wilson. This is Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We're podcasting straight from Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, be it bongs, blunts, joints, or dabs, smoke it if you've got it. Uh, Joining me today is a good friend of mine, Ian Wilson, for the very first time on the podcast. How's it going, bro? It's going, bro. I'm having a good week, you know. Been uh, been playing Armored Core. I'm almost all the way through the uh, final missions here. Struggling a little bit, but uh, honestly, it's been so amazing to sit here and play this game this past week. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, it's been a week since the game came out. Um, so this is very fresh. We're going to do a spoiler-free review, as we usually do with our game launch titles. Um, as for me, I have not gotten anywhere near as far as you have. Uh, I'm still stuck on Balteus at the end of chapter one. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. He, yeah, he was definitely a big uh, bit of a throwback to me. Um, the the weaponry was a bit uh, what's the word chaotic. Um, definitely with the wood chipper on the missiles, but I've experienced using that before with Armored Core Verdict Day and Armored Core 5, where they had this type of weaponry before. So I had previously experienced what it was like when players use it, so an NPC AI kind of felt a little bit challenging, but definitely familiar. I liked it a lot. All right, so yeah, you have a little bit more of context than me. I've never played an Armored Core game before. In fact, I haven't really played that many mech games. Um... I, a little bit of Mech Warrior back in the day when I was really young. I think I tried it out a little bit, but not, you know, extensively. So th- this is very new. In fact, you know, as far as FromSoft games go, I- I've never even beat any of their other titles. Uh, <laughs> I- I've played uh, a little bit of Dark Souls and Elden Ring, of course, when we did it on the podcast, but... Um, yeah, that steep difficulty curve that we see in a lot of their games, I know, uh, does keep a lot of people from progressing. And if I had more time, obviously, you know, I know people can spend hours upon hours into these games, right? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I've heard some people getting lost, like lost in four hours plus on the very first boss, uh, you know, people who have gone even further than that uh, and have refunded the game. Now, I I will say bosses in an armored core game isn't anything new. Um, But at the level that they are in this game, at the difficulty they are, you can definitely see where FromSoft has taken, I would say, bits and pieces from their Souls games and applied it to armored core. And honestly, I was skeptical at first, but... I'm impressed. I uh, If they make another, I'm definitely going to buy it because, I mean, besides the mech customization, I mean, down to the wire, bro, you can you can set the newer than the previous games. Now you can set like the material on your mech. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the stuff that draws a lot of us to these types of games. If we were a mech fan, um, besides, you know, the amazing combat and the difficult styles and high speed, high octane gameplay, as they want to call it. But yeah, nah, for me, it was the mech customization. I, I mean, I have a full glossy mech. Couldn't do that in previous games. You can set up like all your dirt and battle damage. Uh-huh. Yeah. Feels like uh, Gundam Breaker 3 and uh, Armored Core just kind of like 
had a baby. <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude, I actually was impressed with the level of customization. I think that was the biggest selling point for me. Um, and, and what I like about the game's structure is that, you know, you can fail a mission and then it immediately lets you uh, reassemble your mech based on what... You, it won't let you go back to the store. You have to quit the mission and start over to do that. But you, you do have a chance to... Uh, go ahead and swap out some parts and maybe try a different build and see, you know, I think I think a, very, a lot of this game is very much trial and error. Again, there's that, you know, there's that classic Dark Souls kind of uh, gameplay, I guess, kind of, you know, working its way back into there. Because it's been, what, 10 years since FromSoft's done an Armored Core game? September of 2013 was when Verdict Day released. Yeah. So they've got a lot of, you know, they've got a decade of, really kind of focusing on like the souls like genre which they invented and I, I i think you know a lot of armored core fans are definitely going to see the influence brought into here like you said but at its core <laughs> no pen intended uh it is still an armored core game is was what i hear um as far as the difficulty of the boss battles go, which you mentioned earlier, I, I think another another Souls thing is the uh, infamous like tutorial boss. You know, the, the, mm. this first boss that is one hundred percent a skill check. Uh, in this case, though, you have to beat it, and you don't even get to get into the mech customization or anything else, or even the training missions that tell you how to play the fucking game until you get through <laughs> this skill check. <laughs> yeah, um, one thing that somebody pointed out in one of the groups that I kind of like, you know, ghost over and lurking was how it was nice that this boss, the skill check is presented in a manner that you can't get your call sign Raven, which uh -huh. um, if you don't play a lot of armored core um, Raven is this call sign that throughout the entire series, like was basically the ace or the guy, you know, he was the main character of a majority of the series games. It was a, and in this game, it represents basically kind of the same character, you know, and the fact that you have to beat that first boss to kind of get that call sign, you know, as he calls you throughout all the game and stuff, you know, that's um to me, that was a nice nod to all of us who played in the uh, previous games because it definitely feels like you got to earn that. That that's first awesome. boss is definitely, yeah, that's, dude, that's the best part right there. You know, you hear it all in the tutorials. They're like, oh, cool. Why is he called that? Why? There you go. Because you got to earn it. I won't say any more on that, but you got to earn it. Yeah, yeah. I, I obviously not as familiar, but I had heard about that thing about how, like, the, because I remember getting the Raven name. Uh, the, the call sign after the boss battle, and I'm like, oh, okay, so uh, is there some kind of significance to this? Because just the way they pre present it is kind of like, oh, hey, this is a nod. So I looked it up, and I'm like, oh, okay, so this is a like a common hey, call sign. Nah. The <laughs> and so the fact that you have to beat the tutorial boss in order to get it, I, I guess, is, is really kind of cool. And I'm going to admit, like, yeah, I had a little bit of difficulty with that helicopter that, that damn fucking helicopter, um, it, it really actually pushed me to learn like how the game works. Because up to that point, you can kind of just fly around and blow shit up. It's not that difficult. Oh, yeah. um, but once you get to that helicopter, it's like, oh, okay, all right. Um, and the game kind of forces you to really learn the mechanics, learn how to dodge around, and you don't even really get to fuck with your build yet. But it's after that point that I think I really kind of, uh, once I got past the skill check finally and got into being able to customize my mech, I was impressed um, with how, you know, the level of customization that there is and the, the various stats that you're going to have to uh, to manage. And I, I, what I like is that they did something, they did the same thing that Elden Ring did where you can actually pull up like a contextual help menu to show you what like each of the stats means. And so like yeah. anybody can like throw, get, be thrown into this overly complex game and start to understand it like with Elden Ring. Yeah, they really did good. And that's one thing that I was also worried about. Like I love mech games, man. Uh, Gundam, you know, if they made an Evangelion game, I, I, Ride me. Where's my take Lucky. it, bro? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but honestly, that was one thing that worried me is how they were gonna give people who are just starting in this series. Because obviously, there's PC gaming has become big in the last you know ten years. I, I've watched it, and I, I, my biggest thing was all the amount of friends that I have 
on PC that were excited for this game that had never touched it. I was worried about them finding out how to properly handle all the builds and stuff. And some of them, you know, it's, they got it right away, but some of them, obviously they were a little bit like questionable, but those help menus, definitely. It was a nice, like continued added touch to keep that and make it a little bit more intuitive in here, especially with the training stuff. I'm going to be real. They didn't exactly, uh, I mean, they gave you a little tutorial in the previous games to like, Hey, this is how you move around and stuff. And it's like a little VR simulation type deal. Mm -hmm. But they didn't really, um, they don't really like the tutorial in the later sections have you complete the first boss, you know, uh, how to right. do this, how to do that. This is the type of weapons you can use. This is how you manage the uh, ACS overload stuff. Like That was, that was super helpful for me. Yeah, that, that honestly, that that felt so great. And even as like a veteran player, I even found some new things that kind of helped me out, like learning how to... Uh, was it the drifting of the tank? Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. You got your like initial D track playing in the background, and you're yeah. Uh, tank builds are fun actually in this game. I like it a lot more than the previous games. They felt very what's the word? Uh, sluggish and slow. It felt like a true tank. Uh, mm-hmm. Here, it definitely feels like I'm in M1 Abrams on you know a battlefield about to just tear it up, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. All of the the different uh, uh, like mech leg types are like a lot of fun to play with, and I love how like, like you mentioned the tutorials. I was gonna mention that as well. I mean, those really kind of help make this game more accessible and kind of teach you uh, the inner mechanics. And and I was really impressed. Although you do have to play through the game a little bit in order to get that, and you have to play a little bit more in order to unlock more tutorials. Yep. But they'll show you how different types of weapons work and how different types of, uh, of, you know, like the, the mech types work. And I think right now I have the, uh, the reverse joint. I, I think out of the ones that I tested, that was the one that I, I think I was enjoying the most, but I, I definitely want to kind of, you know, build up my, my parts uh, inventory and just have, you know, all the different types ready to go. I mean, the game gives you like a hundred and something fucking slots to save builds Definitely make sure that you're um, paying attention through the missions then because one thing they did add to this game that was new to me, I, I didn't, is spoiler free as I can. There are enemies in the game that you need to kill in order to obtain parts and there are chests in the game that you need to find in order to unlock parts. Now, at okay. first, I was very salted about that, but since the game is open world and there's no video here put quotations around that if you're listening uh, um, i wouldn't call it an open world it's it's very no linear. no yeah it's extremely linear but that's okay like they have a little bit level of faux explorability to the maps and levels yeah. and that's fine by me like i that's cool probably don't call it open world but i like that and you know having those chests and having to go find them in some levels some levels they're right in front of you but some levels you definitely have to go, you know, look around the map just a little bit. And that does actually add to it for me in the experience because some of these some chests are in spots that are like good views, man. I mean, and, and that's one thing that like I would want to draw attention to also in this game is the, the, the detail in the game's world. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, Cybertron. Cybertron. Yeah. But yeah, no. Definitely do your tutorials and pay attention to the world. <laughs> yeah, there are these huge environments. So actually I think the the level structure for this game actually works really well for it. It doesn't need to be open world. Although I would like to see what FromSoft might do with like an open world bet game, but um but you know in, in keeping to I think what's been defined as the armored core formula. I think the way that this game presents itself works perfectly because you do have these big open environments and you have little bonus things to explore, but ultimately, you know, you're, you're progressing through the story at, um, yeah. at, at a certain pace. And I think you, you can go back and replay missions in order to, to catch the other stuff, which is good. Um, and, and I, I just like the, I, I like the, the progression, you know, through the chapter. You know, you have a, a set of missions that are available to you. So you can kind of go after the one that has the highest reward, or you can go after one that looks like it's going to be more interesting. Um, you know, listen to the briefing, throw yourself in. 
and uh, you know, just kind of earn a little bit of money, try out try out another build, and I, I think it's kind of fun to start, you know, building up your stock of parts because I, I think that's going to be another thing that's helpful is that when you're at a part in the story where or, or in the game where you're having a difficult time and your build just isn't working, having other parts available to try to build yourself up in different ways, I think, is going to be really beneficial. And, in fact, I, I kind of wish I had more stock right right now in my present situation because I'm, I'm stuck at that Balteus boss battle and uh if i want to buy more parts then i have to i have to restart the entire mission so it's kind of like <laughs> make um, do with what you have or you know just fuck a, it there's a there's a trick that everybody's been saying early on in the game to uh to grind but there's a specific mission i'll shoot you in a message later so i don't spoil it for anybody but there's a specific mission that you can grind for good money rapidly yeah so yeah it's just pretty quick um but yeah i'll shoot it to you that's how a lot of people got like good parts and stuff but mm, yeah that actually helped me early on with getting ac i did it like three or four times and then i was good but then i saw people talking about it on reddit but yeah that's that's one thing is this game does not um doesn't shy away from the grind part no not at all um, no. and, and and I really enjoy that. You know, there's just kind of this. Even though the game's not an RPG, it, 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 there is kind of a there. It, it is there's kind of a formula to it that's like that, and it's basically like grinding up, you know, income in order to buy more parts in order to to build up your mech. And you know, there's still yeah every bit as much of a grind as you might see in an action RPG. Uh, especially one of FromSoft's. So, yeah, I mean, overall, although I haven't gotten very far in the game, I, I've been in, extremely impressed with the level of customization and, like you said, the level of detail. Uh, the game looks great. I have it playing on a TV right now. I've got to play through. Um, I have been playing the game on PS5 in uh, performance mode because I don't have a 4K TV anyway, so fuck it. Um, and as far as I can tell, the game maintains a consistent 60 frames per second, which is great. Oh, dude, yeah. I, uh, on PC at 1440p max settings with ray tracing on, I get a solid Fuck. 90 FPS. It's, they absolutely like, sec. Yeah. Sorry, I'm eating a bit of a strawberry shake too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. A lot of people have been talking in the gaming like uh, gaming world, like gamers and whatnot, talking about, well, this game should be the uh, the staple for how games should release. I promise you, Armored Core 100% should be a staple for how we wish games would release. If, you know, you're, anybody who watches this from any, like, gaming company or anything like that. that. That right there, we might have DLC. It's a polished game with at least 20-plus hours of gameplay. No microtransactions. None, dude. None. <laughs> and then the replayability, like there's replayability because there's stuff afterwards. That's always been a from soft thing with the armored core games. Always gotta do that multiple playthroughs. It's been a thing since day one. Yeah, because there's you know, in true from soft fashion, multiple endings as I understand it. I think one of those is actually locked behind New Game Plus. Yep, two of them are, I think, actually. Yeah. So there's a plus and a plus plus in this one, just like uh, which to me was awesome because it reminds me of the good old Armored Core Four answer where there was a new game plus, you know, but they didn't really have a plus plus. It was just a new game plus. You got to choose one of two different additional endings. So it was like cool, you know. That one that was fun. Um, I remember blowing up the world, killing everyone, <laughs> mass genocide. You have to have a blow up the world ending, I think, right? And then Always, any, any right? Because right? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, now you have a reason to start all over again, kiddo. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, I, I, I like the uh, the branching storylines. I mean, I, I will say the story has nothing in, in the way of. I don't think there's a single human face in this game. Not that I've seen so far. Um, it's all just mission briefing voiceovers, and yet they've managed to kind of tell a story with pretty good pacing. Um, haven't really gotten very far into it yet myself, but I'm already interested in some of these characters and their motivations, like uh, Handler Walter, whose voice you hear a lot in the beginning of the game. I love Handler Walter. He is personally my favorite. Um, you know, he starts off as a really... 
mysterious guy, but definitely as you play more in the game, you understand a lot more of what he's trying to do or, you know, you understand he's not as shady as he seems. And I like that. Um, there's a lot of characters that give off a lot of shady vibes in the games that I, that's, you know, that's another thing that I've noticed from the Arm Core games is there's always that one character that's like, I don't know about them. And then later on, you're like, oh, okay, you know, they're actually kind of cool or, oh, I, no, 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 no. This guy needs to like get hunted over a fence, like mock Jesus. Fuck this guy. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, I, I I definitely do get a feeling, you know, for this like mysterious character who's there's there's a little bit more to him, and I think it's kind of interesting that your character is there's no on screen personality, so I guess it's just a link directly to you, and you're just some what what do they call him, fried brain mercenary, and and you kind yeah. of just do whatever you're told, <laughs> just <laughs> so you can buy your body back. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. That that. I mean, yeah. The whole setup for this is kind of cool. I mean, I think this game is set in its own continuity, right? Nothing with any other Armored Core games. They said it's supposed to follow. Now, that's a loaded question, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, like, officially and unofficially, all the Armored Core games kind of continue into each other. Um, this one, we're all saying, kind of follows after. Uh, Armor Core 4 4 answer because the if you pay attention to the lore um, in 4 answer, which was the second PS4, uh, sorry, not PS4, PS3 era video game that came out, it was, that was the one that everybody said, Oh, it's Gundam Armor Core because of the how fast paced everything got. Um, at the end of that, the canon ending, uh, basically, humanity stops living on the planet. Um, you know, like they move on, go up, be out of there. Um, that's what follows with the uh, verdict day and five, how everything's just completely destroyed and torn apart. Rubicon is a whole ass different planet. Yeah. Um, so that's why, you know, they haven't officially confirmed or denied the canon, but there's been a lot of like story writing designers and lore designers and lore uh, junkies that have pointed out things over the years that have kind of like pulled it away. Like for instance, the Raven, um, that's what a lot of people are pointing to. This isn't the same continuity as the other games because Raven has been this passed down like symbol mm -hmm. or like call sign for somebody in these games. They have a whole like history of it. So like, yeah, I would say this follows in, uh, but very loosely, man, very, very loosely. FromSoft does not like to confirm continuity with Armored Core for, you know, just so they can leave it as much open ability to design the gameplay and the mechanics as possible. That makes it's sense. like some of the, yeah, like some of the enemies you'll encounter related to the game, I've never seen them, bro. They're like something out of a, you know, science fiction mecha novel. Like it's, it's cool. Like they're fun. They're amazing designs, but. Yeah, I've never seen or heard of these guys before this game, and that's that's cool by me, man. I love that. I like it. It's yeah, great. it's all fresh territory, and I think that works because what we're doing here is we're you know reintroducing Armored Core to the modern gaming era. Um, and that's something I kind of have a question about, you know, in, in regards to the controls, the handling, the way that the game just plays. Um, how similar or or dissimilar is that to previous Armored Core titles? So obviously, we're playing on keyboard and mouse. Um, I've tried it on controller. It didn't work on my PS3 controller that I used with my PC, and that's fine. I used it on the Xbox for a little bit. It felt good. Um, I've just been playing with PC for too long. That keyboard and mouse has just kind of gotten whack for me. Now, I personally, I like how well they did the controls for pc they took time to be intuitive about it and not make it just a jumble like let's just slap it down on here with like a pre-recorded you know audio file or something like that um a lot, i feel like a lot of companies when they make multi-game uh multi-platform games they do really well about the graphics and the performance of the game on pc but a lot of them definitely half-assed the controls. Uh, they did not half-ass the controls on this game on PC. And I haven't heard anybody complain about the controls on console. I'm guessing you kind of find, you probably find them very like easy to learn and work with. 
accessible is the word that comes to mind. You know, you've right trigger for your right hand weapon, left trigger for your left hand weapon. The shoulder buttons are your like alternate fire. You know, like your, yeah. your heavy weapons. Or in my case, I ended up switching to uh, the loadout that lets you store other weapons on there, so you can change up your style, which is cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I find the controls to be an intuitive, um, and it is exactly what I would expect out of a modern mech game as far as, as controls go. Um, the targeting assisting helps. I mean, the game sort of just kind of magnetizes shots based on uh, what enemy your reticule is closest to. And then you can even lock on by pressing R3, and you can actually you know, focus on the enemy, which helps with some of the boss battles and making them feel more dynamic, is that you can track the boss as it moves around the arena. And so I, I thought that that was super helpful. And, um, and I know, I think I heard that like some people were complaining about the, the targeting assist options, but you can also like turn them off and not u- or not use them. There's even a manual aim uh, uh, upgrade that you can get. Yep. Yep. I've used that a few times, especially with uh, dealing with enemies at long range. Yeah, mm-hmm. like if you're trying to like snipe. I mean, there's not really a sniper weapon. I guess like the linear rifle is kind of the closest thing to that. <laughs> That's my only gripe about this game is there's there's always been a sniper rifle weapon. Like you have your long range FCS uh, in targeting mm-hmm. modules in the game, but no sniper weapons. That's, um, you know, it's cool. You know, it, it is what it is. Like, you know, I would have been down for even the Armored Core 5 or Verdict style where you had to kind of, like, plant your unit into the ground in order to use the sniper rifle. That was awesome. That does sound Those cool. things did. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, like, dude, it was awesome when you had, like, a quad leg unit and you just see, like, all four, like, feet just pile drive into the ground. And you're like, all right, let's go. Uh, and, like, the sniper rifle that I used a lot in Verdict Day, uh was one that kind of sat under the arm of the mech, and then when it was time to use it, it would just fold out from under upwards. Oh, badass. Uh-huh. That yeah. Is, that is fucking cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they could they could add some uh, add the sniper rifles into DLC or something. I mean, there's a, there's a yeah. lot of room, you know, I guess, to, to even add on to what they have. I feel like that would change up the meta in PvP perfectly. Oh, man. Yeah, right. that that would that would be very good for this game. Uh, I I definitely hope that in, if they add DLCs, that they add new weapon types or even like you know weapons from previous games to the game to kind of like sit there and make it feel fresh. Because I know like I've played the previous PS3 era games, all all four of those I played like oh so many times i replayed them <laughs> even <laughs> beyond the normal replayability but it was just you know there wasn't a lot of mech games back in the day so that was that was what you got um this one i definitely see myself playing more than three times uh but definitely having new weapons or new gear or even if they added dlc missions at some point that would that would be awesome but it's okay as i see it right now I'm still cool with this game, you know, how it plays, how the enemies, you know, the de- how you have to deal with them. I'm cool with it. The yeah. only thing I hate is the PvP. Okay, I have not tried the PvP yet. So, mm-hmm. uh, and I know there's no co-op, so if you want to play multiplayer, it's either 1v1 or 3v3, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, PvP's... If anybody watched the... Uh, did you watch the multiplayer showcase? No. Okay. Um, it devolves pretty quickly. So, yes, uh, you know, you get into a big new mech game like this, the first thing you want to do is play your build. Um, it's the same issue that people are experiencing with the bosses, and I'll touch on that too while I'm touching on this. Um, the meta is a thing in this game. There is there is nothing like the meta, and you just got to accept it for right now how it is because there's no... How they've always run things is through regulations files in the game, and that's kind of like their patches and sort of sorts. Mm-hmm. And they don't really get updated very often because they, how they always like to say it is, we choose their regulations files through extensive testing, yada yada yada. And that's cool; they can do that. Um, they work. The issue is, is um, PvP right now is heavily dominated by tank builds with Gatling. Um, pretty much anything in this game, especially bosses, can be easily dealt with by dual Gatling tank legs. If you do a heavy build, you'll take the least amount of damage from everything. 
And then with the Gatling guns, I mean, they have range, they have power. As long as you can hit your target, you're fine. Um, and that's that's what I've seen a lot of people. My brother's been playing this game too, and he's every boss he's gotten up to pretty much up to date. He's had to swap into that when he could, and it's. I mean, he says it works, but yeah, that's that's my one. I do not touch PvP for that reason, and I cannot uh, deal with some of the bosses because of that. But that's okay. Like you know. Uh, it's still like fun. I feel like like what you said earlier about getting through a boss and like sometimes having to change up your strategy is fine. Like I like doing fast paced mech play. You know that's how I've always played this series. Um, having to sit down and just hard roll through everything, like I said earlier in M1 Abrams tank. You know sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and that's that's the big boomer. Yeah, I, I've dev- I've heard that there are some builds in this game that can that can break the game pretty much. And it's like, you know, the difficulty of this game is really only in so far as you can build a build that can, that can break through it all. And of course that would be applied to multiplayer. So when you said that there was an issue with PVP, I was like, yeah, that's it. Is somebody just, just found a good build that that's kind of broken. So I don't know if they patch it, you know, are they out of regulation? They they might maybe try nerfing some of the parts of that build, I guess. But it's funny you mention that because I, I saw Dunkey had that build in his video and he used it to get, a, to get past the boss that I'm having trouble with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, and I'm not even going to say here it's cheap. I'm not going to say it's newbie, not saying it's cheating. Cause like I've done it a few times myself. I know veteran players who play this game religiously, like even still play the PS2 games like masters, of the arena and everything. And they've even had to do it. But that's okay because they're enjoying the game. Like, dude, oh my gosh, I'm enjoying this game. I mean, it's one right, thing have... for like the story, right? It, but it's another thing if you're just like cheesing your way through PvP with yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the one reason that like, I've seen a lot of people talk about oh, like, oh, I can't play the PvP in this game. And you know, I've gotten into it with a couple of like armor core fans over it. And it's just I don't think PvP is the focus of this game. It's a nice end game place for, you know, the sweats to go and test their metal or who has the best piloting skills, I guess. But like if everybody's using the same build, it kind of defeats the fun, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. You know, I remember back in Armored Core for Answer, we all did uh sword fights so everybody would do <laughs> dual swords and do the fastest build on like a certain regulation file that had the most boost energy i mean you would see some like high speed fights going on like you know y'all see those like anime fights where everybody's going so fast yeah <laughs> it's, it's kind of like watching that with how like they're locking onto each other and just going right back into it it's it's a lot of fun i want to see that at some point but until I see sword fights going on, I'll probably shy away from PvP because, yeah, sword fighting is that's peak right there. <laughs> it reminds me of slap fighting in GoldenEye. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those were the days, bro. Those were the days. You again. You know, I'm not exactly craving company.
my brother. He's playing right now. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fuck yeah. 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 He beat it before me because he's been going hard. He's been playing, I think, on the second or third playthrough now. But that dude, he has no job right now, so he's kind of... Uh... He's got nothing to do. Yeah, and I bought him the game, so I kind of fueled that one. <laughs> hey, man, it's a great way to, like, to just, you know, kill time. I, I definitely have been, like, even with the little amount that I've played, let's see. I um, could probably find out, actually, exactly how much, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, hours I've put into this game so far. But, yeah, no, you can just, like, even just, just coming in after work and playing for a little while. Like, for me, I, I'll just keep playing and, like, and, 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 and retrying or whatever and, and, like, or going through the missions until I get to a point where I'm, like, stuck. And then, like, I'm, like, okay, if I'm just retrying the same thing over and over again at that point, it's, like, that's, that's usually where that PlayStation ends. But uh, I, I think it is kind of cool that you can always just jump back into something later, you know? Like, cool off a little bit, play something else, and then come back and, like, tackle this challenge, you know? Find a different build. Um, maybe even look online and see, you know, if somebody has some tips, because there's no, like, one-size-fits-all solution, right? Except for yeah. the broken builds that you can build, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, I've definitely noticed a lot of people using the... Uh, there are these, like, back pieces that shoot out lasers, like kind of like bits from Gundam. Uh-huh. Yeah, I noticed a lot of people saying that those are broken at the later levels. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because it, it just does a major ACS damage. So, yeah, definitely your laser builds at later levels. Uh, I, I did notice that back weaponry does take a little bit more precedence in this game. But, yeah, it was nice that they kind of combined the back weaponry from... Four answer and four with the verdict day and five play style of having just two weapons on you know each side. Yeah, um, that does add a lot. But yeah, definitely having like at least one back weapon. I find even if it's just missiles, just adds into it because you can just dump fire them half the time. Missiles and, are, are are so useful, uh, and what I like is that you can kind of just cycle through all of your weapons as they reload. Um, by the way, yeah. I've put in 12 hours, so not a whole, whole lot. I know you could put in a lot more, but uh, just in the last week, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I want to take about like two or three hours off just because of the amount of time I, like, I, I have sat there at the uh, at the title screen getting baked before I played a few times, and I know Steam <laughs> logs time as long as the game's booted, but I, I'm... I have 21.7, so I'll probably say, like, 19 hours right now logged. Yeah, of, like, actual nice. gameplay. Yeah, dude, that's just... And I haven't even completed it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. There, there is and, so much to do, even just tinkering around, you know, with, with your mech. Um, the arena fights, which are a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I feel like that's probably more fun than the PvP, because... Um, you, you know, they introduce you to like just a variety of different uh, mechs, like individual mechs with different uh, specific play styles. So, you, you know, you can kind of, it, you know, each one is a challenge. And I think I was having the most fun with the arena once I got that unlocked. But the, you only unlock so many at a time, I guess. Yeah, you have to complete certain parts of the story and then it unlocks the next level. Um, I'm already completed all the way up to rank S. Um, I will say I like how the arena actually has a proper reward for completing it back yeah. in the day. Um, I mean, you could complete it, but like there wasn't much reward besides like, you know, obviously the money for doing it. Um, now when you complete them, you get the whole like uh, chips that you can use to yeah. like upgrade your, you know, unlock abilities, unlock assault arm. Dude, it was so cool that assault armor was the thing in this game again. Cause I missed it so much. Oh, yeah. I missed it so much. And the fact that it's, like, something that you can just unlock. You don't have to equip a set, like, you know, yeah. a whole special set of parts or, you know, because, like, in 4 Answer, um, you had to equip certain arms and body and leg parts in order to use, you know, assault armor. Now it's just a, it's a chip. Yeah. It's fine. I, I like I'm the cool. chip. I'm cool with it. And you can unlock multiple uses for it as you upgrade. So I like that. Um, that was that was a nice touch, you know, the changes to the little things that players liked over the years that just kind of like, hey, we're going to give you a cookie for liking that. Like, <laughs> heck yeah, bro. 
I'm going to eat that cookie. I'm going to use it three times. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like I liked the, uh, the, the operating system, right? The OS uh, uh, updates that, that you can get with the chips from the arena. Um, that was where I unlocked, you know, that, that uh, ability that allows you to store like secondary or uh, another set of weapons instead of shoulder weapons, which I thought was interesting. Like, like I said, it was, it was helpful, like, for instance, when I'm in this boss battle and I want to try out kind of a different build, so to speak. You know, I can just kind of swap my weapons out and go from, like, a, a close-range style, you know, and kind of swap them out and go long-range and, and retreat for a little bit if I need to, which is cool. So there's just so much, like, variance that you can bring in, and you can kind of find a customization that works for you. Or, or you can make a dual Gatling tank build. And just plow everything. <laughs> but you know what? Even that's fun because it's like, you know, you earned those parts. And, you know, as long as you're, you're and I think, is, you know, when it, regards, com when it comes to, like, the single player, you know, if you're having fun plowing down with an overpowered build, like, fuck yeah, man. I mean, at least you earned the parts, you know, and there's no microtransactions. Nobody bought their way to it. Exactly. You know, and, and that's, yeah, especially with how difficult this game is, I will not. It's like with, you know, Dark Souls. Basically, never play Dark Souls. Won't play it. Won't finish it. Hate it. I feel like that's a Darshan simulator compared to this. This game can't fault anybody who comes in. I, you know, there was... I think it was a comment on the Steam page. Let me see. There's no iframes, Ian. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's... it's Get wood chipped, bro. But there's a guy... It might have been on a, a like a comment somewhere. There was somebody complaining how he came into this game thinking that it was going to be Mecha Dark Souls. Yeah. And he was so very much wrong. And good. Get good. Realize that, please. <laughs> because this is never going to be what you wanted it to be. Uh, yeah, they, they, they really play it hard on this one. I mean, no, I, like you said, there's no iframes. You know, you can't dodge it. You just, you got to eat some of your damage or play it smart the entire time. And, you know, that's, that's where it's like, hey, you, if you can get past, you know, the first mission, you can get past the, per, up to the first boss, you can get past the first boss, even you, like, congrats, dude, you're killing it. Because I can guarantee you there's so many people who played this game for two hours, three hours, couldn't get past the first boss and said, screw this, I'm refunding it. <laughs> I want to see like a no damage uh, boss fight or something. I want to see like uh, there's a community challenge going on right now to complete the game only using your fists. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> yeah, you can you can literally take off all your weaponry and all you're reduced to is punching. Now, honestly, that is cool if you can do it. There are some fights that I just don't think that it's gonna be uh, a good idea. Yeah, it's like, um, is that even possible? I don't know. I mean, may maybe if you just have the sword. <laughs> Someone call, let me solo her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see what uh, let me solo her is doing with this game if, if he's playing this game. Um, that actually would be really fun. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm starting to think it like. What what if they did allow you to just like bring in mechs from other worlds to just help you like fight this battle? <laughs> um, from I mean, they did have co op back in the day. Mm -hmm. That was really it was a nice touch, um, especially back in like four or four answer was how some of the uh, cause, like some of the bosses in this game are obviously big. Um, one of the bosses you'll fight, I think, in the second chapter is like a giant. It's giant. Well, let's just leave it at that. Um, those are fun. Uh, but actually, I think you might have fought it in the first. I'm not too sure. I, I've been going the last couple of days. So, <laughs> but there are lots of those battles. There's the Spirit of Mother Will, there's the Capricorn, there's like a whole bunch of these big boss battles back and forth and for answer. And then going in and playing it with co op with friends made it seem a lot more like fun. It did make the missions go by faster. Yeah. But it definitely added a lot of fun to it. Like you, even if it was like, hey, I have there's two of us now. We don't have to go with like the heaviest build because there's two people to take all the damage. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, you and your friend can go around 
I think uh, me and my buddies back in four answer days on Xbox 360 did a full on white glint build with blades. You went with the colors black and I went with the full white. Nice. And we took out Spirit and Mother Roll with just blades. I mean, and that thing was like that boss back in the day was the size of a city. Oh. Like it, it was it was a big boss to take on in the game. And like it wasn't super hard, obviously, but like that's where the community evolved. It's like finding new ways to take on bosses, especially in co-op and stuff. You know, I've seen people do like three, four man, you know, in um in five and verdict day and they had a different version of those they did like three and four man runs with like just pistols and stuff because like in verdict day you had like the kick ability to walk to run up to somebody and kick them while you're boosting you can kind of like you do that now right yeah yeah you have to unlock the ability that one you didn't have to do any upgrades or anything oh okay just straight up yeah um contrary to proper belief i'm gonna say this i kind of like five and verdict day a little bit more really Mm-hmm. I just felt like the combat, all slow, was very more mech-like. You know, mm-hmm. it was gritty, very like you know how the mechs moved, how they looked. They were bulky. Definitely seemed very armor core realistic. Well, um, they've done they've made so many armored core games because before FromSoft did Souls, it was mainly armored core, and they were releasing like multiple of these a year, I believe. Like <laughs> mm, they tried to do one to two a year, yeah. Yeah. In the PS3, when the PS3 era came, they kind of slowed down heavily. Um, but yeah, that was the PS2 era was littered with armored core games. Right. Well, and see, yeah. nowadays, you know, you, that'd probably be just d- DLC to kind of, you know, because I, I think ha- giving a game more longevity is a good thing, and not having to pop out so many games a year. If you can pop one out every few years, you know, and Maybe they can continue to do like what a lot of other companies do, which is just kind of an, an alternating release schedule with their two flagship franchises, you know, and just kind of do, you know, here's a Souls like, here's a, here's an Armored Core game. Um, I really hope. Um, I'm kind of hoping that with how successful this game has been, mm-hmm. that they give us ports to the old games on PC. Yeah I, yeah, I would love to see what the modding community does with the rest of the games. Honestly. I've been watching it for the last couple of days. The first few days of State Off is just going to be nothing but BS mods. But Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd love to see what kind of mods people have made for this game. <laughs> oh, dude. It's it's taken off slowly, obviously. You know, we were within the same release schedule as Starfield. Uh, so a lot of the modding community is kind of focusing on Starfield right now. That but I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, they're actually, they're getting steady. Uh, wow. First mod I see on there is a Gundam. Nice. Fucking I'm not, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So they're already getting right with it, right where I saw they would get with it. So that's cool. But, dude, um, mods for this game are exactly why I was excited. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm because with the level of customization that's already available, I'd love to see what the modding community can do with that, and just like take it to its extreme. Like I've seen what they've done even with games like Tears of the Kingdom, <laughs> which doesn't oh, dude, have yeah. an official PC release, <laughs> obviously. Quotations. Yeah, but yeah, man. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll get into our final thoughts here, because um, I don't know how much else there is to say without getting too far into spoilers uh, and yep. late game items. Um, starting with you, Ian, as our guest, uh, what are, it's, it's your final verdict on Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. So I'm uh, sitting here looking at, you know, obviously my Steam page and looking at the store page for it. Cause I always like reading how the, all the stuff that everybody else thinks about the game. And I've been looking at all the other stuff that's coming out with the game, like all the mods. Um, Metacritic gives it an 87. Now, if I'm going to give it an out of 10, honestly, I'm going to have to go with a good solid 9.5. I can't give it the 10 just because I don't have that co-op, bro. And that mm. I missed the big giant mech fights. That's what really like sold Armored Core for me. I feel like a lot of fans would enjoy those a lot more. 
but that nine and a half mainly because of the wood chipper. Um, you know, it's embodies the trueness of every armored core game and all the from software's ideals in the last few years, which is making a truly challenging game with a good entry to show you how bad it's gonna get. Because if you think it stops bad there, yeah, I probably just want to go ahead and refund the game. But, you know, dude, <laughs> I, I love it. I'm going to be playing it, you know. Um, as soon as I get some new host sauce, I'm going to do what some other dude did and program two uh, flight sticks to play the game. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I yeah, dude, if I won't say get this on sale, some people will say get it on sale. If you want to get it on sale, get it on sale. But personally... Uh, I'm a firm believer on games like this. You got to buy it from directly from the source, you know, however, buy it the best value that you can, because supporting this game would mean that we get another one. And honestly, if you think this game looks cool or if you play it and you love it, then yeah, definitely make sure you support it. It's, it's worth it. It's going to be a staple for the next five years. Fuck yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, I, I think that, and, and considering the game's like retail value, like for the base game, is is just uh, is just sixty dollars. It's not even the standard seventy dollars that we see most games now. Um, sixty dollar game, no microtransactions. Um, very very um, admirable, you know, as a developer that From Software releases its titles like this. Um, and then there's that's just it just shows a lot of integrity. And um, I think it's a good value. You know, there's hundreds of hours of, of gameplay easily that you can get out of this game. Um, and, and I think it's something I can recommend almost anybody to go ahead and try out, you know. Because, again, I mean, this game is already cheaper than most uh, AAA games now are these days. And um, I feel like the game is accessible enough, even with the skill check, at the game, you know, once... You know, you kind of work with it, and you and you learn the game as you're intended to. You know, I think you're supposed to die a few times and then kind of learn it, and then you really, really get into like the meat and potatoes of the game. And you can, and like I said, there's a lot of accessibility. The game kind of doesn't hold your hand, but gives you all of the resources that you need to be good at it, which is really nice. So, I mean, I think I can recommend this to almost anybody. You know, it, it, it's one of the most accessible hardcore games I've seen. Ever, which is which is interesting coming from from software, right? <laughs> uh, Accessible, not necessarily their <laughs> their thing. You know, they're more like, "Hey, welcome to Dark Souls, bitch!" Like this is, <laughs> you know, this is the way it is. We're not going to lower the difficulty, and I actually uh, respect them for that too. But uh, this game doesn't bow down on on. Um, difficulty i think it's accessible just because it's the first you know uh net game that they've done since 2013 and i i think you know there is an opportunity for a lot of elden ring and dark souls players to come in and and you know play something like this for the first time and so i i like that they maintain the level of difficulty that they're known for while still giving you the chance to learn the mechanics of this um, I, I feel like, for instance, I have an easier time getting into this than I did with Elden Ring or Dark Souls. So, <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I feel that, too. If I was an outside player and I did not, like, care about uh, Armored Core as much, honestly, I would feel this is a little bit easier to get into. You know, there's not a, lot, a whole lot of outside story you got to know about. It's just, hey, this is your flushed out story from what you can tell from the trailer. You know, you get everything as you play the game. And, you know, they really detail in the story, like you said. So I, yeah, bro, I agree with you 100%. You know. Hell yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you being on, bro. This was a great episode. And uh, to all of our listeners out there, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or feedback on your platform of choice. Um, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, and wherever else you get your podcasts. You can hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, if you have a suggestion of something you'd like to see us you know, talk about or play or do, uh, always open to it. We are going to be coming into Season 6 of Collateral Gaming this month. So this was basically like the last bit of uh, postseason content 
uh, which wasn't a lot. We really didn't. <laughs> uh, I don't think we got anything out in August, but we're coming hard in September. We're going to be opening up with Spider-Man, uh, the uh, PS4, PS5 game. Uh, we'll be doing a redux on that. We originally covered Spider-Man PS4 back uh, in season one. So it'll be interesting now to revisit the game, especially in the context of Spider-Man 2 coming out. Uh, and then part two of that episode is going to actually be another look at Miles Morales. Again, we did an episode on it when it came out, but it was a spoiler-free episode like this one. So um, I want to, you know, take the opportunity to play through these games, you know, to do another two-part episode on these games um, and kind of relook at them now. And then we'll actually be covering Spider-Man 2 in November after our spooky content in October. So uh, super, super stoked about the new Spider-Man game. Um, actually, there's a lot of games that are coming out in November that I'm really stoked about. So <laughs> almost too many, man. Because <laughs> uh, what is there's uh, Super Mario RPG, Persona 5 Tactica, uh, the new Naruto Storm Connections game, uh, Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> but it's been a good year for gaming, definitely. Dude, yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, Ian, thanks for being on, man. Thanks for having me, Ashley. Dude, it's been nice talking to you again. I hope to see you soon, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta catch up. And you know, next time you're in San Antonio, or I gotta come out to you, actually. You should, and... you should come visit. I've got a, you know, that I've got a little setup here in my apartment. Um, <laughs> but I, I do come to San Antonio a lot. In fact, I'm actually coming next week. Believe it or not. <laughs> oh, shoot, hit me up. We can get some food, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll see what's up. All right, man. Well, you take care. And again, thank you so much for having me on. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Hell yeah, guys. Uh, thanks for uh, supporting us. And uh, through uh, season five, we will see you in season six. Uh, until then, I've been Ashley Chancellor. I'm Ian Wilson. This is Collateral Gaming. We are out. Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by their respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.